Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to show you how to fix a portable power generator. Now this, it has a starter for your car, it has a light, and it has a 12 volt power supply. And it doesn't work, and we're going to change the battery, or at least it didn't work. Now, this battery went bad, I replaced the battery that was in it, and I did it using this to check the batteries around my shop to see what's the best battery for the job. We can prove this isn't working with this because this shows you how much current is going into a battery. Let's show you, check it out. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, YouTube, everybody out there, it's Philip 20 and I'm back. Check it out. So I've got this device here. I believe it's called uh, Kilowitz. There's the box. Kilowitz. Kilowitz. So they was kind enough to ship this out to me, uh, free of charge, of course, but we're just here to review it. Um, these lights, they don't flicker in my eyes. You guys see them flicker, just imagine them not flickering. I'm going to uh, demonstrate what this uh, does. We've got a couple batteries right here. We've got a battery pack that is bad. And we got a battery that is a known good battery. This has uh, from a true RMS voltage meter we're looking at. 12.64 volts. Now I've played with this battery just a touch with this. I've charged it a little bit and seen how it was doing. Uh, we've got a known bad battery here. Now it's got a uh, small power supply here. It's really small. It's just a plug-in wall power supply, nothing special. So let's look here and put our negative terminal here. First we uh, connect our negative terminal and then we connect our positive terminal. If you can't see it here, it's uh, red on the top with the plus sign, negative sign over here. So this was donated to uh, the channel from a family member. So we're gonna connect that now if you can see our voltages here, I'm just going to close this box up a little. We'll just bring it up to around 12-ish volts. We'll say 12.6 just for kicks. Okay, and we're under a constant voltage. It's going to keep that voltage continuously at that current but here's the problem this battery pack is severely damaged i don't know if you can tell but it's expanded so since it's expanded there's not nothing i can do about it uh this battery is totally bad there's nothing we can do to fix it but we do have a replacement for this battery i think it's the same size it is. It's the same thickness there. It's the same dimensions here. So what we can do is take this battery pack, replace the one that's in it, because this one is a known bad battery. There's uh, nothing we can do to fix this. I already know that it's a problem. And you can see here we don't have any watts coming out or amps. Now, I want to uh, show you how many watts the machine is running at. It's currently consuming 7.4 watts to produce 12.6 volts with no current. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hook up this uh, battery supply, power supply, to a known good battery here. I'm 
All right, since we know that the battery voltage is slightly higher here, It's 12.62 volts. We shouldn't have any current until this hits 12.62. So here's our uh, uh, coarse voltage knob, and we're going to go to our fine voltage knob. And if you move this just a little, it'll it'll go up. So six point is 12.61. It's showing that we got uh, a quarter watt. Twelve point six two shows about a half a watt. So now we're reading twelve point six three. So this is a, a tenth of a volt off. No, it's a hundredth of a volt off. Not a whole lot. Just a hundredth of a volt off. So we're going to bring it up to uh, thirteen volts. And that's currently powering at uh, 0.75 amps. And that's 17 watts. This is showing uh, 8 watts. So it's consuming around 7 watts to be on. And it seems to be functioning really well. I I'm actually having a lot of fun playing with this. Uh, we know we've got a battery that will accept current. Uh, and we have a bad battery that wouldn't accept any current, even if you put a, applied voltage to it. So there was nothing we could do to help that, not even a little. Uh, I put that battery on charge for like two weeks. It never done nothing. Uh, so let's, uh, it's showing 12.98 volts on our uh, digital meter. This is a true RMS meter. This is really, really accurate. So let's, uh, let's turn it up to uh, 14 volts. Oh, I went to 15. This battery's pretty full. It don't need a whole lot of a charge. So now we're uh, at 14.12, that is 1.02 amps. This will slowly drop down as the voltage rises. And we're putting in 13 watts, which is pretty typical. Now this thing should, uh, this thing can go up to 30 volts on, you know, any type of battery. I'm going to say that you don't want to get too involved with trying to do this with, a, let's say you've got a solar battery bank. All right, now my solar array is powering this device. But I want to explain that if you do have a solar battery bank, you need to have the positive and negative disconnected from the circuit that you're running. So if you have one battery bank, you cannot plug it in and try to play with your batteries or balance your batteries. All batteries should be totally disconnected before you start playing with this on the batteries. Um, I've had an incident where I had to work uh, around it. I had uh, connected the negative terminal, which is this black terminal, in between our circuit. And our neutral leg in our alternating current system is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. So whenever I had, the, even though I had the positive fuse disconnected, the negative terminal of the battery was connected to this through this. So it actually burned a wire up inside. I went in and fixed it. It's not that big a deal. But if I would have left it on there for a long time, it probably would have been a bigger problem. Now I'm showing you it says 14 volts right there, which is pretty cool. What we're going to do is actually just directly connect it right here to our electric meter. So here's our electric meter. It's uh, showing 14.13. This is showing 14.11. Now I'm going to bring the voltage up to uh, 30 volts, the maximum. It's showing 32.2 volts. And this is 32.08 volts. 32.02 uh, 
and this is showing 32.08 so it's it's a little off it's not a hundred percent accurate but that's okay not a big deal for us now what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, disconnect the power, unplug it, unplug the terminals. Okay, now we're going to set that out of the way and we're going to assemble this battery bank here. By the way, this thing has actually got a uh, power inverter on it. I know this works, but we're going to uh, set it up to where this connected through here makes everybody super jolly and happy. It's going to... So now we got our known functioning battery in there. We'll have to align it a little here. Let's see if it works before we put the screws to it. So we got a, uh, a light switch. We know we got a light switch now. We got a tester that says full, low, or charge, and the tester gauge says it's green. And now we've got a power inverter right here. That's an AC power inverter. So let's check the voltage on AC. Now remember, this power supply doesn't do alternating current nothing. It only turns on from alternating current. You can't use it for alternating current. This is DC power converter. Now, I took the fuse out of this power inverter while I was working with it. All right, I can hear a fan running. And we got 117 volts on one circuit and 117 volts on the other circuit. Now, because we was able to test our batteries and find out if they can accept power or not, this one, it can't, it's no good. So it's no good and needs to be uh, taken off to the recycling center or whatnot, which that is probably where it'll go. And uh, now we've got a uh, power supply that we can plug in and everything else and it's important to keep these batteries charged so if you do have a battery bank at your house and you haven't charged it in a while go in and charge it now before it's too late you should always leave these batteries fully charged or they will go bad because this one it expanded some i can i can see it I mean, it's, it's hard to see. I can see this wobbling on the on its side. So, you know, these things, uh, this helped me figure out what battery was best for this application. And uh, now I know it works. So I hope you guys liked the video. This is a very simple video for a review for a, uh, I can't pronounce it too well, Kyle K. Wheats power supply. Okay, Wheats power supply. I'm guessing that's how you say it, but it also, it is made in China as well. So uh, it feels like a, uh, it's not real heavy. It feels like a nice portable power supply. I like it, but again, I didn't pay for it. This was sent to me and I'm not being paid for this review. This is a non-biased review. I have to say this is a sturdy power supply in my opinion. Now, you, uh, opinions will differ. I like it. If you don't like it, you don't have to get it. But if you want one, the link's in the description below. This is Philip 20. Peace out.